Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me for pricing. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a 2020 model year launch. This is the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe with blue dial, blue ceramic bezel insert, and red gold case. In fact, this this is Omega's Sedna red gold with a higher percentage of palladium to avoid oxidizing and fading and a higher percentage of copper to make it redder than standard red gold. Taking a quick look, you can see that it's 43 millimeters in diameter. It's 13.4 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip. It is 49.5 millimeters with a 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs. It's easy to forget about the watches that came out in 2020 because it was the year that SIHH and Basel World were dissolved and there were other things going on in terms of global public health. But this was one of the best released of that year, a watch that I can wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. You can see my wrist right here wearing the watch well. I recommend your wrist be at least my size to wear this well. I think it's broad enough at almost 50 millimeters lug to lug that it's out to the edges of my wrist. It's not over, but if my wrist were any smaller, this would not be a fit. So keep that in mind. 16 centimeter circumference wrist and up. That said, it is decisively thinner than the 5015. Of course, this is the reference 5000 Bathyscaph. It is slimmer in profile in this easier to tuck underneath a sleeve. The watch has a strap of sailcloth, dark blue, textile on the top. There's some bolstering to give it thickness. It has a folded edge, a monotone stitch, and a rubber inlay on the bottom so that that textile, which can last a decade, will not aggress against your wrist. These sailcloth straps are super durable, and you have that rubber against the wrist for a wonderfully supple feel. We have a matching Sedna red gold pin and buckle, and take a look at the attention to detail. Even the pin has been faceted and beveled around its profile. Excellent attention to detail here. Really attractive, and that continues on the case. This watch is more overtly vintage inspired than the 5015. You can see we have squared off lug ends, minimal beveling, a big crown with no crown guards, and then hybrid baton syringe hands on the dial. That big crown is a screw down. The watch is still 300 meters water resistant, and you can see here everything is in satin finished gold, so it doesn't explode and gleam in a fashion that would limit its utility to the Sunset Strip or Miami Beach. This is a watch you can wear even in Chicago, London, Frankfurt, New York. There's a wonderful sobriety and a sort of refined, mature demeanor to satinated gold that you don't get with high polish. Taking a look at the bezel, you can hear. It's a high-grade detent that feels and sounds great. 120 click, you line up that bezel pearl with the minute hand, and now you have a zero to 60 minute count up timer. Easy to read the watch in the dark. You can see that there is a luminescent application on the second sand, so you know if the watch is running in the dark. Every dive watch should do that, but for some reason every dive watch does not do that. We have rose gold hands, rose gold indices. We have a blue metallic sunburst center dial. We have a date disc that is the same color as the dial in excellent taste. I can even give Blanc Pen a lot of credit for limiting the text and the size of the text on this dial. Now, we do have two subsidiary setting modes. One is hacking or stop seconds. So you can set the watch to a second against a reference time. Then there's also a quick set system for the dates. You can rapidly cycle that. On the reverse side, we have the gorgeous and still technically formidable caliber 1315 that first bowed on the 5015 in 2007. So automatic winding with three mainspring barrels. It has a 120 hour power reserve. It's adjusted in six positions, not five like a chronometer, six with no compromise. 35 pivot joules. You can see it features a free sprung balance for shock tolerance and an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring for resistance to magnetism. These movements are known to run within one second a day on a regular basis basis. Note that the rotor features three different types of finishing, media blasting, satination, and mirror beveling on its edge. This is a technically and aesthetically formidable movement. You can see that the beveling on the bridges 
is a mile wide, rounded, glossy, gleaming, and mirrored. Some of the finest I've found on a mainstream watch. We also have black polished screw heads. The screws have chamfered slots and circumference. You can see a sort of spiral, deeply grooved graining was applied across the bridges because Cote de Genève would appear out of place on a watch like this. We have solarization on the ratchet wheel, which is beautiful and subtle, and satination on all of the train wheels. We also have engine turning on the base plate below the balance. And then if you look carefully, you can see that all of the screw and all of the jewel sinks have been internally mirror beveled. It's all very, very impressive. Largely hand finished and hand adjusted, it is an artisanally crafted movement that puts the Royal Oak Offshore Divers power plant to shame. This is the dive watch to buy if you're shopping a luxury dive watch from Le Brasseau. Reach out to Timasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.